Hey everyone. Um, so far, we talked about um, is that Bernoulli process, Poisson process, and discrete time Markov chain, right? As a special case of stochastic process. So starting from today, um, we are going to talk about continuous time Markov chain and Bernoulli process. Okay, first, uh, I want to refresh your memory. So, um, when you talk about the discrete time Markov chain, we assume that the time parameter n uh, is discrete, right? So, if x of n equals i, then uh, we are saying that the process is to be in state i at time n. And the discrete time Markov chain, discrete time stochastic process, that satisfies this relationship is known as the discrete time Markov chain. So for a discrete, for a Markov chain, given the past states, they are x of zero, x of one through x of n minus one, and the present state, which is x of n, the conditional distribution of any future state. So the x of n plus 1 is independent of the past states and dependence only on the present state, right? That's what we've discussed. And in the discrete time Markov chain, we considered a system with a finite set of states. And the system is observed at a certain sequence of points in time or stages. And the system may make a transition from one state to another between observations according to known probability distribution. Right? And one step transition probabilities would be represented by this. And it is independent of the time parameter. Right? So we assume that transition probability does not change over time. However, unlike the discrete time Markov chain, a continuous time Markov chain considers a continuous time parameter, t, because the evolution of the process is being observed continuously over time. Okay? So in the discrete, I'm sorry, in the continuous time Markov chain, each value of t, that is the transit points, are the random points in time. That is, the uh, transition point, transit points are not necessarily integer value. Is that right? And the stochastic process, x of t, is a continuous time Markov chain if this, con this equation is satisfied. Which means that, just like the discrete time Markov chain, the continuous time Markov chain also has the memory list property, Markovian profit property, okay? So in other words, um, given the past state, x of u in this case, and the present state, which is x of s here, the u exists in any points in time between zero and s, okay? The conditional distribution of the future state, which is x of t plus s, is independent of the past state and depends only on the present state. Okay? So the uh, given probability uh, becomes reduced down to this. Okay, so in general, a random variable x is memoryless if this equation is true. And by definition, these are all true, right? And because this equation is satisfied if t is exponentially distributed, okay? These t's are exponentially distributed. So, in such case, 
e2 minus lambda s plus t equals e2 minus lambda t times e2 minus lambda s, right? So uh, exponentially distributed random variables, so memory is because it does satisfy this condition. Okay? So we may say that t sub 1 is exponentially distributed. Because for the case of exponential distribution, this equation is always true. OK, now suppose that a continuous time Markov chain enters a certain state, i, at some time. And suppose that the process does not leave state i during the next 10 minutes, then what is the probability that the process will not leave state I during the following five minutes? So what is the desired probability in this case? So we suppose that the continuous time Markov chain enters state I. Let's say time t equals 0, OK? And suppose the process does not leave that state. So a transition does not occur, OK, during the next 10 minutes. Now, if we let okay, t sub 1 uh, or t sub i represents the amount of time that the process stays in state i. Before making a transition into a different state to other state, OK? Then the desired probability becomes given t1 is greater than 10 minutes. We want to know t1 is greater than 15 minutes, right? And because of the memory list property, this becomes this, right? Because the process is in state i at time t equals 10. By memory list property, Markovian property, it follows that the probability it remains in that state during the interval between 10 and 15 is just the unconditional probability that it stays in state i for at least five minutes. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Oh, I already made this. Sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> so this is same, exactly the same. I just written down. Okay. Okay. Now you know the difference between the discrete time Markov chain and continuous time Markov chain. So I do say that a discrete time Markov chain changes states only at discrete point in time, whereas a continuous time Markov chain may change its state at any point in time. That is, the transition points, transit points, are not necessarily integer uh, for the continuous time Markov chain. Okay? See here, in the discrete time Markov chain, 
these states are changed only at discrete point in time, right? After, let's say, one hour, the state has been changed. And then, after another hour, the state has been changed, and so on, right? But here, for the continuous time Markov chain, those changes can make at any point in time. Let's say, after 45 minutes, the, the state has been changed. And then, let's say, 15 minutes, again, the state has been changed. And then, uh, like, one and a half hours later, the state has been changed. Okay? So, in the continuous time Markov chain, the transit points are not necessarily be the integer value. Okay? What was that last comment? Mm -hmm. What was the last comment if not integer last one? Yeah, the transit points doesn't necessarily to be the integer. Okay, here, if I say t sub 1, t sub i, sorry, t sub i <coughs> is the length of the time spent in a state before making a transition into different state, then t sub i has the exponential distribution. Okay? So in other words, in a continuous time Markov chain, the state transitions may occur at any point in time. And the time between transitions is exponentially distributed, okay? So I could define the continuous time Markov chain like this. A continuous time Markov chain is a stochastic process having the following properties. X of t can take on values in the set of non-negative integers. And each time the process enters a state i, the amount of time it spends in that state before making a transition into other state is exponentially distributed with mean rate lambda i. So the mean time becomes 1 over lambda i. Okay? When the process leaves state i, it next enters the state j with some probability p sub i j. And the next state to be visited after state i is independent of the length of the time spent in state i. Okay. So the continuous time Markov chain is a stochastic process that moves from state to state in accordance with a discrete time Markov chain. But the length of the time spent in a state before making a transition into other state has the exponential distribution, okay? So this is the key point of today's lecture. And for the uh, continuous time Markov chain, these equations are true. Okay. I made extra slide here, so probably in your handout you don't have this, but um, I think it's, it's useful, so I provide this. Um, so in this case, if we define lambda sub i, is the rate at each the process make a transition um, starting from state i. And p sub ij is the transition probability. Okay? And if I notice that lambda sub ij is the transition rate when in state i that the process make a transition into other state j. Okay? 
then from this, so P sub ij becomes lambda sub ij over lambda i. So down here, P sub ij can be replaced by this, okay? And then again, here, um, because in down in the, uh, what is that? Here, if you look at this, okay, lambda i doesn't have j, right? That's why I take out lambda. And then I can take this out, right? So we have this, okay? This becomes this. And eventually, one equals this, right? So I can say that lambda i is equal to sum over lambda sub ij, okay? So we're gonna use this property later. Now let's consider a transition, transition diagram like this. Based on this diagram, we can make a matrix, what is called lambda, matrix lambda, that represents a transition rates for each state, okay? So in this matrix lambda, for the off the diagonal elements here, also here. Lambda sub ij represents the transition rate occurred into state j from state i. So we always start from row value. These are i's, and the column values becomes j, okay? So of the diagonal, which is i equals, i is not equals j, then the lambda sub ij is the transition rate occurred into state j from state i. Okay, and for the <coughs> elements on the diagonal, the transition rates are occurred from state J to all other state. So simply, you just need to combine. Um, okay, let me delete this part. You just need to combine these two for each state and then put it in the diagonal element, and then put negative value, okay, to distinguish from others. So it's the same. On the diagonal, the second row, there is a summation of lambda 2, 1 plus lambda 2, 3. And then put the negative sign to distinguish from all the others, okay? And in the last row, Lambda 3, 1 plus lambda 3, 2 becomes here, and then we put the negative sign, okay? So in this way, you can make, construct lambda matrix, okay? And we will use this matrix for balance equations later, just to let you know, okay? But in this screen, um, I just want to let you know how to construct lambda matrix, okay? And one of the important property of the lambda matrix is the summation of each row of the lambda matrix must equals zero, okay? So each row summation should be equal to one, okay? Okay, just like discrete time Markov chain, Steady state probabilities are independent of the initial state i for the continuous time Markov chain. And it must be non-negative, okay? So the summation of steady state probabilities for every state should be equal to one, okay? And what other equations are needed 
to determine pi for the continuous time Markov chain. In the case of discrete time Markov chain, we use the equations, which is pi equals pi p, right? For the discrete time Markov chain. But in the case of continuous time Markov chain, we use what are called balanced equations. So let's take an example for that. For this transition diagram, the balanced equation would look like this, okay? That is, in general, for each state, the rate at which the system leaves the state must equal to the rate at which the system enters the state. Okay? So here, lambda i times pi i means that if you are in state i, you will have a transition rate out of state i. So if you have this, Sorry. because earlier we, we proved this is true, right? So instead of lambda i up here, you can put this summation if you want, OK? Then you're going to see how the balance equation were formed. Therefore, for a continuous time Markov chain, a steady state distribution is computed by solving the system of equations. Okay? So the balance equation and summation of pi is equal to 1. And here's another way to determine steady state distribution. Okay. So using matrix lambda, pi times lambda matrix equals 0, together with this equation. So let's take the example and then let's see how we can generate a balance equation as well as other uh, alternative way to determine steady state distribution. Okay. Okay, so using this transition diagram, let's write the balance equation. So for the state 1, first we're going to put the transition rates from state 1, right? So it's going to be lambda 1, pi 1, right? Or, in other words, that is going to be same as um, lambda 1, 2 plus lambda 1, 3, right? Because there is a transition rate from state 1. These are lambda 1, 2, and lambda 1, 3, right? And then you put together and then multiply pi 1, right? So this is same as this, right? Equals transition rates 
into state 1, in this case, lambda to 1, from state 2, and lambda 3, 1, from state 3. Is that right? Similarly, for state number 2, the balance equation must be lambda 2, 1 plus 2, 3. Those are from state 1, right? And then lambda 1, 2, oh, I'm sorry. Those are from state number 2. And then lambda 1, pi 1, right? Sorry. Let me. Okay. So now we need to get the transition rate into state two, right? Because we are uh, talking about state number two. So those are lambda one two from state number one, right? And then lambda three two. from say number three. And for state number three, transition rates from state number three is gonna be three one, three two, right? From state number three. Now we need to consider what transitions occurs into state three? Those are lambda one three and lambda two three, right? So lambda one three from state one, lambda two three from state two. Is that right? But I gotta tell you that this three equations are linearly dependent, okay? Which means if you add up all of these three equations, then the left-hand side is equal to right-hand side, okay? So what you need to do is uh, randomly, just arbitrarily choose one of them and discard it. So. For example, you can take the first equation out. But you have one more equation, right? Which is pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 equals 1. Since you have three unknown variables, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. And you have three equations, right? So you should be able to determine the pi's. It's very easy, right? Okay, and earlier we've constructed a matrix lambda that represents the transition rates for each state. Now using this matrix lambda, let's construct this. Pi times lambda equals zero. So that's going to be pi one, pi two, pi three times the lambda matrix. Okay, equals zero. That's what you are going to do. So the first equation would be the pi times the first column of lambda matrix, right? That's going to be negative lambda 1, 2, lambda 1, 3, pi 1, plus lambda 2, 1, pi 2, lambda 3, 1, pi 3 equals 0. 
the next equation would be pi times the second column of matrix lambda. That's going to be lambda 1, 2, pi 1, minus lambda 2, 1, plus lambda 2, 3, pi 2, plus lambda 3, 2, pi 3, equals 0. And finally, the third equation should be pi times the last column of matrix lambda. That is lambda 1, 3, pi 1, lambda 2, 3, pi 2, minus lambda 3, 1, lambda 3, 2, pi 3, equals 0. Again, this system of linear equations are linearly dependent. Okay? So what you need is just arbitrarily choose one. This time, let's choose the second equation and discard it. But we have one more equation here, right? Which is pi 1 plus pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 equals 1. So we have 1, 2, 3 equations, right? Again. Okay. And you're going to see that this set of equations are identical from this, OK? Of course, you should be able to um, come up with same solution in the end. Okay, now let's consider a small example, another example. Okay, so in this example, let's suppose you're using two light bulbs in your home. And on the average, a light bulb lasts for 30 days. And they are exponentially distributed, we're assuming that. When a light bulb burns out, it takes me an average of five days. Also, let's say it's exponentially distributed before I replace the bulb. And when, the, when both bulbs are burned out, I replace both bulbs simultaneously. And um, well, I didn't mean to do that. OK, hold on a second. Um, Let's change it, the problem description. I didn't mean to do this. Let's suppose, okay. Instead of simultaneously here, let's suppose I replace the verb one at a time, okay? Okay, now we are required to formulate a continuous time Markov chain model of this situation. And we are going to define the state of system to be either the number of verbs functioning 
or the number of bulbs burned out. Okay. So let me give you a couple of minutes. Uh, why don't you use the um, state definition either of this and construct the Markov chain model. Okay, so here um, we notice that on the average, light bulb lasts for 30 days. So what is the burning rate? It's going to be 1 over 30, right, per day. Is that right? How about the repair rate then? Here, to say one over five per day. That is the repair rate. Is that right? Okay. So, um, like I said here, you can use either of this definition. Um, the state of system can be either the number of verbs functioning or the number of verbs burned out. So. Let's just use this one, okay? So you're going to use the state of system will be the number of bulbs burned out. Then the transition diagram would be like this. So here, state zero means the number of burned out light bulb is zero, which means both of them are functioning well, right? So let's say both of them are in good condition. In here, one bulb is functioning OK, and the other one is broken down or burned out. Here, both verbs are burned out. Is that right? Then we're going to put up here. The failure rate of the right bulb. What is this? It's 1 over 30, right, per day. But the thing is, in this state, how many verbs are in good condition? Two of them, is it right? So both of them has the same failure rate. That's why you need to multiply by two. Does that make sense? Likewise, here, we're going to put the failure rate. 
we start from state number one. In state number one, there is only one verbs working, right? So this time, you just have one over thirty times one. Here, if there is one verbs already broken down, the service rate should be included here. Okay. One over five. That is our service rate. All right? Although there are two verbs broken down up here, how are we going to replace verbs one at a time? Okay, that's why you do not multiply by two. Yeah. Okay. If I say I'm going to uh, work. In this case, it's going to be just one, okay? Because I'm going to replace the verb one at a time, although there are two broken ones. Because I'm going to replace only one verb at a time. So what is this state number? That is the number of verbs broken down, right? Yeah. Because I'm going to replace only one verb at a time. So after that, still one of the verbs in broken down condition. Okay. If I replace the verb, both verbs at a time, then we're going to have a transition from 2 to 0. Is that right? But um, since we, we didn't say so, so we are not going to have this. So um, let's say if I ask you to determine, let's say, the fraction of the times that both light verbs are working, then how would you answer for that? Obviously, you need to obtain, you need to determine steady-state state probability distribution, right? And then, what will be the answer? Fraction of the time that both light bulbs are working. That's going to be pi 0, right? Because in pi 0, in state 0, both bulbs are working fine. Okay, so now um, now let's use the balance equation to determine the steady state distribution for this example. Okay, so let me give you like maybe two to three minutes. Why don't you work on it, on the balance equations based on this transition diagram?
Okay, so let me redraw the transition diagram. Uh, so we have zero, one, two. This is two over thirty. One over thirty, right? This is one over five and one over five. And here we have two verbs working. Here one down and both burned out, right? So let's use the balance equation. The balance equation, do you remember? Um, it's going to be transition rate from state I is equal to transition rate into state I. Okay? That's what you are going to use. So for state one, what's the what's the transition rate from state one? I'm sorry, let's start with state zero. Okay? So transition rates from state zero would be here. There is only one, right? Zero two one. So we're going to put lambda 0, 1. That is from state 0, right? Is equal to transition rates into state 0. There is only one, right? Yeah. So lambda 1, 0, which is from state 1. That's it, right? How about for state one? The transition rate from state one would be one, two, and one, zero, right? So we have lambda one, two, plus lambda one, zero. Both are from state one. What about the transition rates into state one? That's going to be two one and zero one. Okay? So we have lambda two one plus lambda zero one. Oh, sorry, we cannot combine these two because they are from different state. That's going to be lambda 2, 1 is from pi 2. Lambda 0, 1 from state 0. Okay? And for State two. Transition rate from state two would be only this one, right? Lambda two one is from pi two. Transition rate into state two would be only this, right? Lambda one two is from pi one. So these are the balance equations. That's very easy, right? You just need to be careful. And we're going to just arbitrarily choose one of them. And remove it. Because I choose this, it looks most uh, complicated one. Instead, we're going to add one more equation. Summation of pi's. 
So you start from 0, 1, and 2 equal to 1. Okay? And how do you construct lambda, matrix lambda, based on this transition diagram? So again, let me redraw the transition diagram. So we have 0, 1, 2. Uh, 2 over 30, 1 over 30, and then 1 over 5, 1 over 5. Yeah, okay. So in this case, lambda matrix would be 3 by 3 matrix, of course. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, like that, okay? Here we have, starting from state 0, you have lambda 0, 1, right? That's the only one. And we don't have anything here. So on the diagonal, it's going to be negative lambda 0, 1. All right. Starting from state one, we do have lambda one two, lambda one zero. Is that right? So on the diagonal elements should be summation of those two, one zero plus one two, and then put the negative sign. For the state number two, we have only one transition. Go to state one, right? So we have lambda two one here. And there is no transition, goes to state zero. So the diagonal is gonna be negative lambda two one. That's it, right? Now, to determine the steady state probability distribution, we can use pi times lambda equals zero, all right? So what you need is pi zero, one, two times lambda matrix equals zero, okay? That's what you need to do. So the first equation would be pi times the first column of matrix lambda. That's going to be negative lambda 0, 1 times pi 0 plus lambda 1, 0, pi 1 equals 0. Is that right? This equation is pi times second column of matrix lambda. So lambda 0, 1, pi 0, minus lambda 1, 0, 1, 2, pi 1, plus lambda 2, 1, pi 2, equals 0. The last one would be pi times the third column of the matrix lambda. So that's going to be lambda 1, 2, pi 1, minus lambda 2, 1, pi 2, equals 0. Again, the system of linear equations are um, linearly dependent. So I'm going to choose one arbitrarily and take it out. 
and then we're gonna consider pi zero plus pi one pi two equals zero. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. You see? Okay. Now let's talk about burst test process. Okay. So burst test process is a special type of continuous time Markov chain that models the size of population. Okay. So the state of the system in this burst test process represents the population. Okay, so in this state, the population is zero, and in this state, there is one person, and two people, three people, and so on. Okay, so as you can see here, in the burst test process, the population increases by one at a time. So we are saying that these are the birth rate, okay? These are the birth rate. In other words, the population in the birth death process decreases by one. So these are death rate, okay? These are the death rate. Does that make sense? Okay. And in the birth death process, we are assuming that the birth and death are independent of each other. And for the burst test process, the steady state distribution would be determined by solving these equations. I want to refer um, to the, our textbook. I believe they've um, derived these formulations. So for the burst test process, we're going to use these formulas to determine steady state probabilities. Okay. So let's use the example that we just talked about, this example, okay, to derive those two formulas. But first of all, we need to examine whether this continuous time Markov chain model is a burst test process or not. Is this burst test process? Is that right? Because in this case, the population, the population is the number of light bulb burned out, right? The population is increased by one, right? And also, the population is decreased by one. Because we assume that although there are two light bulbs burned out, we're going to replace it by one, by one, right? One at a time. So obviously, this is the burst test process. Of course, we assuming that um, here, the burning rate and the replacing the repair rate and the uh, I mean the burning of the light bulb and the repairing the right light bulbs are independent independent of each other so definitely this is the one of the burst test process okay so we are safe to use this formula to determine the steady state probability distribution Okay, so um, what is that? This one. So let me redraw the transition diagram first. We have zero, one, two. 
2 over 30, 1 over 30, and then 1 fifth, 1 fifth. Okay? And the first equation that you are going to use is 1 over pi 0 is equal to 1 plus sum over i equals 1, 2 plus infinite lambda i minus 1, lambda 1, lambda 0. mu two mu one and then um, pi i at b lambda i minus one lambda one lambda zero over mu i mu 2, mu 1, times pi 0 for each i values. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you that. In the birth dates process, these birth dates, birth rates, are usually represented by lambda, okay? And the death rate, Represented by mu, okay, and this is equal to mu one because it starts from state one, okay, which means this becomes mu two, is that right? Because it originates from state two. Likewise, what is that then? It's gonna be lambda zero, right? Because this first started from state number zero. Likewise, this first rate becomes lambda one. Okay? So down here, it does say lambda one, lambda zero, mu two, mu one. Okay? According to our transition diagram. Okay. Now, how do you write the first formula? Which is this. So it's going to be 1 over pi 0 equal to 1 plus the first birth rate, which is 2 over 30 over first death rate, which is 1 over 5, okay? Plus the product of first two birth rate, which is 2 over 30, 1 over 30, over the product of the first two death rate, which is 1 over 5, and square in this case, right? Which is 1 over 5. So just imagine that if you have one more state, for example, like this, just for example, and then you have here lambda 2, this is going to be mu 3, for example, just for example. Then what will be the next term? That's going to be the product of the first three first rate. Goes here, 2 over 30 times 1 over 30 times lambda 2 over the product of the first three death rate. It's going to be 1 over 5, 1 over 5 mu 3, and so on, okay? But in our case, we don't have this, right? So we don't have this.
So here, this is the only unknown variable, pi 0, right? So you should be able to get pi 0 very easily. Is that right? So once you get pi 0 value from the first formula, you should be able to get all the other pi values. That's going to be easy. First, pi 1 would be this, OK? Pi 1 would be this, which is 2 over 30 over 1 over 5 times pi 0, OK? And then next pi value, pi 2 would be this. times pi 0. So anybody can give me pi 0 value from this formula? It's going to be 1 plus 6, so 1 third, right? Plus 6, 6. So what is this? So like this, right? So what is the pi zero? What is pi zero? It's gotta be eighteen over twenty-five. A little over seventy percent, right? Something. It's a point seven two, so seventy-two percent. Okay. So since we got pi 0 is um, 18 over 25, right? So we plug in over here. And over here. Then you should be able to get pi 1 and pi 2 accordingly, right? Pi 0 is 25 or 18. No, 1 over pi 0 is this. Okay. So pi 0 has to be reciprocal of this. Okay. Just be careful. So earlier, I asked the fraction of the time that both light bulbs are working, that should be pi 0, 72%. Okay. And you should be able to get the same answer from these two uh, other methods. Okay? But you can see that the last method, this formula only works for the burst test process. This is a kind of streamlined formula for the burst test process, OK? But the other two methodologies, uh, using the balance equation and the lambda matrix, using pi times lambda equals 0, those two methodologies does work for any continuous time Markov chain model, OK? 
है इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज दिस फॉर्मूला फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू डबल चेक वेदर द मार्क ऑफ चेन मदर दैट यू कंस्ट्रक्टेड सेटिस्फाई द फर्स्ट टेस्ट प्रोसेस ओके okay so this is all for today and next time i'm going to give you some exercise problems uh for the general continuous time markov chain model as well as first test process okay okay thank you see you next time